I believe the world today and in areas of the church is filled with lying spirits and doctrines of devils. Paul's very clear, isn't he? Doesn't, doesn't he say, uh, what, writing to Timothy there, that you'll come a day when people think that gain is godliness? Some of God's choices saints don't have another shirt to change. Verse 5, For if we have been planted in the likeness of his death, knowing this, that our old man, our old self, is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Now look, you're either serving God, or serving self, or serving sin. There's no other areas. Verse 7 is quite a text. He that is dead is freed from sin. No, no, it doesn't mean when this body dies. The next verse goes on. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also rise with him. Verse 9, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, death dieth no more, death hath no dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. The greatest thing that could ever cross your lips is to stand and say to the world, the flesh, the devil, the in-laws and outlaws, Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, not when I shuffle off this mortal coil, as Shakespeare says, but the life I now live in the flesh, surrounded with all the adversities and temptations and trials, and all the things that can come, and yet Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, <clears throat> I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul has an amazing pedigree. He forgets it all. <coughs> As he ends his letter to the Galatians, he says in the 14th verse of chapter 6, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world is crucified to me, and I am crucified to the world. Now there's a thing you and I have never seen. We have never seen the agonizing death of a man on a cross. Oh well, of course, in the days of the Romans, it was a sport. Immediately a man was nailed to the cross, he lost all his rights. And if you ever get nailed to the cross, you'll lose all yours too. Immediately he was nailed on the cross and he was exalted, the people could do as they like. They could throw a bucket of filth on him, they could throw their rotten eggs, they could stone him. He had no rights. And before he died, his eyes would be gouged out, his ribs would be broken, blood would be dripping from him. And everybody got excited, particularly if it was a kind of a Barabbas who was there. He deserves all he gets. He, he's destroyed other people's lives. He's raped people. He, he, he's broken people's minds. And, and so they go on with a list of things that he'd done. And he should die a thousand deaths. But as soon as the bell tolled in the city, they didn't stay there. They went back into the city. At six o'clock, they could see that bleeding victim. There was nobody there at six o'clock in the morning. On the arms of the cross were the vultures. They'd pick out the eyes. They'd tear the body. The blood would run out. Then the dogs came out of Jerusalem and, and, and licked up the, the, the blood as they did the blood of Jezebel. Nobody wanted to photograph it. They didn't have photography, but nobody wanted to see it. A bloody spectacle. A man whose innards were hanging out. A man whose body is so distorted you could hardly tell it was a human frame. It had been lashed with rocks. It was covered with filth. It had only excrement and every other offensive thing. And Paul says, when I said goodbye to the world, I said goodbye to a filthy thing. The world is crucified to me. It's a filthy world. It's a corrupt world. But not only that, he says, I'm crucified to the world. Paul says, don't trouble me. I'm branded. I bear the marks of a slave. I'm a bond slave of Jesus Christ. I've no will of my own. I've no rights of my own. There's an old hymn established on that very theme. Let my hands perform his bidding. Let my feet run in his ways. Let my eyes see Jesus only. Let my lips speak forth his praise. All for Jesus. 
All my being's ransom powers, all my thoughts and words and doings, all my days and all my hours. This man is no professional preacher. Preaching is not a profession, it's a passion. A man can't preach with passion, he shouldn't preach at all. Isn't it staggering how, how, how far this amazing man went? Look at his missionary journeys without airplanes, without trains. God put something in him. The stupid world tried to get it out of him. But God put something, something in him and, and they lashed him 195 times and they couldn't whip it out of him. And he hung on a piece of wood in the Mediterranean for 36 hours and they couldn't wash it out of him. And they tried to threaten it out of him. But Almighty God put something in there, you see. They were not trying to kill the Apostle Paul, the idiots. They were trying to kill Jesus Christ. Because Christ lived in him. Paul has no fear. Do you know what he did? I would to God some of you fellows would do it. Do you know what he once did? He said, I bow the knee to the Father. And because he bowed the knee to the Father, he never bowed the knee to anybody else. Neither demons or politicians or kings. He stood there, regal. He was free. Free from the fear of men. Free from the fear of consequences. Free from anything the devil might put on him or other people. From henceforth he says, let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. I'm afraid that Paul would look on with compassion and real pity on our feeble faith. I sometimes say this is a day of thin theology and fat preachers. I'm sure it is. There's no sentimental Christianity with the Apostle Paul. There's no such thing as coming to the cross and just getting your sins forgiven. Oh, no, 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 no. The man who only wants his sins forgiven is trifling with Christianity. If ever we need to be alert that we don't get caught and trapped in false doctrine, it's the day in which we live. If ever there was a day and we should put on the whole armor of God, God in heaven, you know. How often do you go to a prayer meeting where you feel there's real engagement against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world? There's only one power that can withstand the onslaught that's on all the nations of the earth right now. And that is the Church of Jesus Christ anointed with the Holy Ghost. Paul is God's intoxicated man. He uses the two things together in Ephesians. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Why? Because when a man is spirit filled, he's like a drunk man. You ever try to ridicule a drunk man? He goes singing on his way, you know, and you, you say, you idiot. And he says, yes, that's right. I am an idiot. My father was an idiot. And, and you can't get to him. He's drunk. He, another spirit controls him. Paul's blind. He says, I see neither Jew nor Greek nor bondman nor free man. If I see a king and he has a gold crown and all his ritual, so what? In the sense of him, he's dead. Because you see, there are only two kinds of people in the world. Those who are dead in sin and those who are dead to sin. A lot of you here this morning, you don't need more light. So this, this will only make it worse for you at the judgment. All you need is more obedience. Some of you have known for years what you should do and you hold back. You know, some of us are not only offended at what comes from other people, we're offended at what God says to us. I believe the cardinal ethic of Christianity is sacrifice, not success, sacrifice. Five minutes inside eternity, I believe every one of us will have wished that we'd sacrifice more, prayed more, loved more, sweated more, grieved more, wept more. 